this is the CBCT scan, the three-dimensional scan of the patient, the titanium implant. This crown here on top of the implant was loose. The screw had failed because there was a tiny uh, fracture in the uh, housing, in the hex. But the implant was quite stable. This is a small got a percha marker on my surgical guide. So this isn't a true guided surgery, it's a semi-guided surgery. But so this is our patient before the surgery. Uh, you see that this is the location of the titanium implant, which is a 30-year-old implant. It turns out that after some detective work, uh, we discovered it was a, a Zimmer implant. based on the patient's model. It's got a piece of gutta percha in it and the scan was taken with this in the mouth. And it shows that the marker is exactly where we want it to be. So we're going to remove the gutta percha and create a hole that is exactly two millimeters wide with the same zirconia burr that we're going to use. Flat surface. Take a narrow burr and just melt it out. this zirconia burr, we have to make sure we don't alter the path. That's it. Let's make sure it has tight fit. So this is all ready for the surgery. We're going to drop this in some antiseptic liquid, such as Peridex chlorhexidine so it stays sterile I want to make sure all these debris are removed and we're ready to go This is the part where we draw blood from the patient. We will obtain a few test tubes which will be spinned and that portion of the blood which is called PRF, uh, platelet-rich fibrin, uh, actually gels and becomes like jello and that will be compressed into a graft-like material. Um, or alternately we can also use the liquid portion of the PRF which is called PRP which will be used to irrigate the socket and soak the implant before inserting into the bone. The growth factors in these uh, two fragments of uh, blood will enable the bone to heal faster and to integrate much better. This is not a true fully guided surgery, therefore we use the uh, surgical template to mark the entry and to go in with the pilot burr, the 
approximately up to three to four millimeters so that we can gauge uh, the direction and the position. And we just continue without the surgical guide from then on. If the X-ray or the 3D scan showed that we have 15 millimeters of bone depth. So we are using a 10 millimeter implant uh, and a five millimeter diameter. This is not the implant, it is the tapping instrument. So we create a thread in the bone for the zirconia implant to engage. Here we are harvesting the PRP or the liquid portion of the spin blood to irrigate the socket. Now we are grabbing the implant. It's a fully metal-free zirconia implant. Our manufacturer is a Zeramex from Switzerland. Now we are irrigating the socket with PRP. And we also dipped the implant in PRP. And now we are torquing it in. We don't use a handpiece. This is one of my favorite instruments. It's um, a torquing um, handheld instrument uh, by Anplo Gear and you set the torque in the handle and usually we try to achieve a torque of 32 newton centimeter and therefore we have a lot more control than using uh, a handpiece. This is the healing cap and the patient will have instructions not to eat on the left side for a few weeks, uh, maybe even a month or two. Here we see the implant right after placement. It is a system that uh, goes right above the bone, between bone and gum level. Zeramex, Swiss manufacturer, full zirconia, metal free. So just to recap, this is the measuring pin uh, after the pilot drill, just to make sure that we're at the right position. And then we proceed with the um, rest of the drills to uh, create the uh, opening for the implant. Uh, how the implant looks in the x-ray, as we see the uh, color is right above the bone um, and we have a healing cap on top. This implant will stay in for uh, about f three months uh, to integrate before we uh, fix the abutment, which um, is uh, affixed with a carbon fiber screw. Um, I will post that video in four months. So here we see uh, another x-ray nicely showing the threads of the titanium 30-year-old th implant. We had to pre-order the abutment for the titanium implant and very briefly we uh, used a CEREC and scanned the implant to restore it. Um, in this case we're using a single crown. We will be using the Lava Ultimate which is a long-term temporary, uh, very forgiving material. It's not as hard as uh, porcelain and it will serve uh, the patient's needs to chew while the zirconia is integrating. 
If you remember from the x-ray, the two implants are quite far from each other. Uh, I decided to place my zirconia implant closer to the natural tooth in the front. So which means that in the future I have a choice of restoring that section with a bridge made from the same material. We will make the bridge out of Lava Ultimate again and um, it will be bridged between the two implants. As you know, we can bridge two implants together, but we cannot bridge an implant with a natural tooth.